get everybody set up and I'm going live and we are there. We are live. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Awesome. Okay. So I'm Angel Balance. I'm Life Fit Mama. You're on my channel, whether Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. And so we're going live to go over and have a mama time, motivational, devotional together. And right now we're choosing the devotional that is called Make Your Mark. And it was developed by Gateway Women at my home church, Gateway uh, in Frisco, uh, but they have campuses everywhere, but my home church in Frisco. So I invite you to grab your Bible, your coffee, and come and chat and pray with me. We're, we're focusing right now on the section of the devotional where we're talking about making our mark in the home. And the title of today's devotional is Mother Mottos. So if you join me, usually I do these on Mondays. To this week, I was traveling on Monday, so I pushed it to Wednesday. So that you wouldn't have to wait another week, I'm going ahead and bringing the word now. But what we're doing is we're taking week by week on Mondays. I'm going live and we're sharing this devotional. We're going through the word. It only takes us a few minutes. We pray and maybe chat at the end. If you want to chime in, I'll ask you a question. You can offer your opinion, your advice, your tips and tricks as a woman, a mom of faith. And so we're focusing on in the home. In a few more weeks, we'll transition. And in the weeks to come, we'll be talking about being a woman or making your mark uh, as a leader and in the home, uh, beyond, not just in the home, hey, Joe Marie, but also in the, for the kingdom, in the marketplace. And so everywhere that you serve, being able to make sure that your life is giving glory to God. And that we're living to our fullest potential and in his purpose, on purpose, for a purpose, right? Okay, added that little extra. But let's go ahead. I want to pray over the word. Thank you, Father, for the people who are coming in and tuning into your word and joining me for this casual little coffee chat. And Lord, I just pray that these continue to be a blessing to other women and mothers and that you would help to... Um, make our hearts fertile soil to receive this word and to apply it in our lives. And since we're talking mostly about um, in the home right now, Lord God, I specifically want to pray over our families, over our households, Father, that you would help to remove all uh, question that you are into the details of our home life. And Lord, that you perfect that which concerns us, including our children and our marriages. And so I ask, Father, that through this word, you bless us and you empower us. And I thank you ahead of time for the grace to be better mothers, strengthened in you, and to know that nothing is too hard. Nothing is impossible. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, Griggs, how you doing? I'm going to wave right back at you. So here we go. Let's go into the word. So it's Mother Mottos, and this devotional today is written by Dorothy Newton. Uh, and the scripture for today is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It says, but those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. You can find thousands of books. Thousands of blogs and other instructional materials on the subject of parenting, right? It seems like everybody who is anybody has something to say on the topic. And I'm no exception. While I can't claim credibility through any recognized degree, I gathered my confidence to talk about the issue of parenting, specifically single parenting, from personal experience. So again, this is Dorothy talking. Um, and so every now and then, I'm going to make sure that uh, you can uh, kind of clarify between her words and mine and, and, and jump in with my own different, unique perspective. If I have something that I feel like Holy Spirit leading me to add. Right. So um, she continues. The Lord has blessed me to be called mom by two beautiful, well-adjusted young men. As a single parent, I don't believe for one second that their upbringing was all my doing. I recognize the influence of various teachers, friends, and mentors in their development. Having said that, I also know I have absolutely been the person who fed, hugged, pushed, 
and prayed my little family throughout life every single day. I feel like me personally, Angel, I feel like I've also had many women in my life, whether they were natural mothers, grandmothers, great grandmothers, great great grandmothers, but also spiritual mothers in my life who have done that for me. They have been that person to to feed me, whether physically or spiritually. They have hugged me, they've pushed me, and they have prayed uh, over me and over my life in, in such a way that it has impacted my life eternally. And I'm forever grateful for those women in my life. And I'm hoping, uh, my prayer is that I'm that same mom to my kids. So let's go. Let's go back. So it says, looking back, I believe I can offer others encouragement and support by sharing three mother mottos that have had the greatest impact on my children. So here are our mother mottos for our devotional today. I'm going to share them with you, and I'd love to hear your feedback as as I share them. Hello from North Carolina. Hello. So first, strive to keep a positive approach in your home. As a parent, I quickly learned that my own attitudes and responses usually set the tone for the emotional environment. When my sons were toddlers, their daily routines included bumps and tumbles. I often had to resist the urge to cry with them when they fell, because when my kids sensed my distress, they would habitually launch into tearful tirades. However, if I stayed calm, they usually popped right up and moved merrily on their way. Have you ever experienced that to be true for you? You know, that that when you get stressed out or, you know, you know, when they fall and you're like, you know, that they even when they were toddlers, mine would do that. If I reacted like, oh, no, 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 and like would rush to their rescue, they would break down in tears and it would be like, a big ordeal. And sometimes it was a much bigger dramatic fuss than what it really needed to be. Like they could have been completely fine. And so sometimes I would kind of test that theory. I would kind of go, you know, they would fall, but I would notice that it wasn't really a serious fall. They were just bumping their knee. And instead of my knee jerk emotional reaction to get in a tizzy because I was a new mom, I would just kind of go, oh, 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 and kind of, you know, look, try not to make eye contact. And nine times out of 10, they would quickly get over it and and get up on their feet and go play merrily on their way and and, and show that it wasn't even bothering them. So they were definitely responsive to my stress level. And it carries on even now today. You know, I've, my kids are nine and they're, I'm about to have 12 and 13 year olds. They each have a birthday coming up. And it's the same thing on the mornings that I get up and I'm, feeling stressed or rushed or, you know, whatever from uh, the, you you know, whether because I didn't take the time to get in my own quiet space and pray and get in the word and, and, you know, find my peaceful place. And I've carried on the worries from yesterday into today, or, you know, I've, I've let something kind of set me off and I've got that, you know, just, I'm annoyed at everybody and everything, you know, they pick up on that and they adjust their, their, uh, attitudes and their responses and the way that they talk to each other and to me and to their, and to Donald, my husband. And, and, you know, it, it, it breaks, it impacts the entire family dynamic in the morning. Right. And, and I know whenever I drop them off at school in the morning, when you know what kind of set what kind of mindset I'm dropping them off in and how much of this because I started the day off wrong on the wrong foot and and you know I always try to take that moment right before they get out the door to kind of you know reclaim the peace I guess and 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 bring out the joy if I recognize that I need to correct myself and help them start their day right So I'm going to, I'm going to keep on going. So, however, if I stay calm, they usually pop right back up and move merrily on their way. When I responded to each of their crises in a positive manner, it led to a better outcome because they were taking their cues from me. I like that. They're taking their cues from us moms. So I constantly pray that I can maintain self-control and keep a calm spirit with my kids. Even today. Second, here's our second mother motto. Prioritize your life. I like this one too. 
The clock doesn't care about our daily to-do list. No matter how well we orchestrate our time, something will usually still be undone. I figured out early that it was too easy to park my children in front of the television or hand them an iPad as I attended to what I thought were top priorities. I had to decide to prioritize spending quality time with my kids. I had to decide. I had to decide. That's hard. I had to decide to prioritize spending quality time with my kids. It's so easy. It is so easy. I'm guilty of it. I just did it yesterday. You know, I did not. I told myself that I was going to prioritize spending time with my kids yesterday after after school and um, during uh, before I had to get on a call because I had a last minute uh, call with some ladies on my team and you know it was unplanned. We decided on it at the last minute today and I failed to communicate that to my husband and I failed to communicate it to my kids ahead of time and I kept, kept thinking well I've got all these other things that I wanted to get done today for my coaching business and so I was like I'm going to hurry up and get this done and before I knew it all the time had passed for me to be able to spend that quality time with my kids could I have gotten some of that stuff done after my call and just made the personal sacrifice to, you know, do it after the call, but, and, you know, save a little bit later. Absolutely. I, I could have done that. And I could have had that extra time with my husband and my kids. I just, I failed to, I mean, I had good intentions, but I didn't make the final decision and then follow through with it with actually putting my phone down. So prioritize our life. That is that is the, the goal. So it says, uh, I had to decide to prioritize spending quality time with my kids. Sure, there were days when laundry didn't get folded, the floors were a bit grimy, and dust piles were in competition with the books on the shelf. Still, I accomplished my goal when I touched my children's faces and took the time to influence their minds and hearts. The Apostle Paul says that we should focus on pure, noble, and praiseworthy things. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, that attitude helps me prioritize activities. So finally, here's her third point, her third mother motto. Finally, learn to develop empathy and perspective. This last bit of advice was the hardest for me to put into practice. Practicing empathy meant that I had to do my best to put myself in my child's shoes. This one's another hard one. <laughs> this was another hard, for, hard one for me. Perspective meant understanding how much maturity they should have according to their age. I don't know if you've ever been guilty of this, but I have, of putting too much responsibility or maybe expecting a little bit too much from the nine-year-old or a certain maturity level from the 12 year old that really she's not ready for. But be, especially with my oldest one, it's like, because she's the firstborn and the oldest and the one that I see myself in the most, I think I tend to expect more from her. Like just assume that she's gonna give me more maturity wise uh, than what she may be ready for. And the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter what I was expected to do when I was 12 and 13 and 14, because my life, the expectations put on me, I had a completely different life than she does now. But thank God for that. Donald and I have worked hard to be able to preserve and create this time of her life so that she would not have to have some of the same experiences that we did. And so that she could fully embrace being right at the age that she is and not have to grow up too fast. So I don't want to get too much into that. But from this vantage point, I could say that may, you know, it is a challenge sometimes to see things from their perspective. But I find that this has helped. So from this vantage point, I could see how it might be difficult to tell on another kid. Like when you're saying, you know, when you're expecting one kid to kind of tattletale on the other, like being the informer, right? Hi, Tammy. Nice to see you. So, you know, like, and I've actually kind of try, started to try to practice the opposite with my kids. Um, we have a couple in the three kids that we have. A couple of them kind of like to be the informer, one a little bit more than the other. And so I'm actually 
the parent that is looking at that child and saying, okay, I don't need another informer, do I? Are you the parent? No, I want you to be the big brother, the big sister, or the little, you know, I the little brother. I want you to be the that the sibling who is loyal to a fault uh, to your brother or your sister. I want you to know that long after your mom and dad are gone from this earth, that you have another person who knew you when you were a kid, who knows everything about your childhood, who knows where you came from, who know your parents and the values you were raised in, and you are able to rely on them through thick and thin, come what may, and no matter how awful of a decision you've made, right? And the only reason that you would be coming to me to inform me of something that your brother or sister has done is because you're you're fearful or you're wanting to help prevent harm that they may be doing to themselves or someone else. And that is the only reason not to get them in trouble, not to, you know, make sure that we enforce a discipline on them because we've, you know, you got in trouble for it two weeks ago and you want to keep score or whatever. Right. So, um, but then there are some times that it is difficult for them to admit to a fault or to tell on their sibling. And if I just take a minute and try to see things from their perspective, you know, maybe it, I would understand why it's hard to explain an unexpected grade that, you know, is lower than what we have set first are for them as a standard to achieve or forget to put their dirty clothes in the laundry hamper. So patience and seeing from their perspective didn't necessarily change the outcome, including whether to discipline them, but the negotiation was heartfelt by both parties. Patience is part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Hey, Vicki, nice to see you jump in. As parents, we will never be perfect, but by intentionally making choices that show how we value and love our children, we can make a significant impact on their future. So I'm going to close with these questions that the writer has given us and maybe open up a little bit more discussion. So please feel free to jump in and leave your comments if you have something that you can add to answer the questions. So it says, have you thought about your goals as a parent? Have you thought about your goals as a parent? Now, personally, I kind of shared a little bit a minute ago, you know, Donald and I, we have taken the time and if with, there's something that comes up, which of course does because, you know, our oldest is still growing. She's just middle school and all kinds of new situations and, you know, are always coming up between the oldest girl and the oldest boy having to be in new circumstances and having to think about different situations and different friendships and, you know, guarding their childhood, but also guiding their path and wanting to bring them up to be self-sufficient, independent little beings that are also responsible and all of that, the whole shipping, you know, we have to come into an agreement prior to enforcing you know, we have to kind of know what our common goal is as parents. We need to know, you know, what are our goals here in this situation as their parents? What are we wanting for the expected outcome? And what are the attitudes and qualities that we want to that that we want our children to develop as a result of the talk, the decision, the consequences, the things that we're about to say and do and put in place in their life, you know, what is it going to produce what it, we're hoping it will produce in their life? What is the purpose behind the way we are parenting in another words? So pray, search the scriptures and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you into the priority priorities, the practices and the perspective that will help you achieve those goals. So you know, I have the same question for you, the same questions for you. And I encourage you, if you're jumping on and listening to the replay or you're in it or you take a minute, you're maybe you're live with me now, but it's a kind of a loaded question, you know, and but take a minute. Maybe you haven't thought of it before and think about, you know, what are your goals as a parent overall? And, you know, what is an overarching mission? or goal 
or thought process or purpose behind your parenting, your parenting style, your parenting strategies, your techniques, the way you talk to your kids, the way you look and see your kids, um, the way you discipline your kids um, and share it. You know, is there a scripture that backs it up? Is there something that your mom or dad taught you or someone in your childhood that made an impact on your life and it carried over into how you want to parent your kids? I want to hear about it. Share it with us and let's become stronger, better moms uh, for our kids in the home and, and, and truly make a mark that we can be proud of uh, and, and help continue that legacy that we, that we hope to build in our children's futures. So, all right, let's pray and I'll let you guys go. Thank you, Father, for this time in the word and thank you for this devotional. Thank you for the gifted women of Gateway and the way that they have shared their hearts, their homes, their uh, their thoughts, um, and, and their revelation from you, Lord God. And, and in such a way that it's casual and it's comfortable and it's approachable. And it's not about being perfect or being the best, but, but about being true to who we are in you, in our identity in Christ, as a mom, as a woman, as a person, uh, put in this earth for purpose, in a purpose, and on purpose by you, Lord God. Thank you for entrusting us with all the gifts that you have given us, and thank, including our children, and that great assignment that you have put on us as parents. Help us to walk in it gracefully and in your strength and your peace, and not our own, not the world's peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. You guys have a great day and thank you. Thank you, everyone who jumped on to be a part of this discussion with me. And I hope that you will keep your coffee or your tea nice and warm and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, guys.